Got dreams of being a professional podcaster, but have no idea what you're doing? This is impossible. That's about to change. A new kind of school. Welcome to the Pod School Podcast. Hello and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to talk all about podcast websites. Do you need one? Can you be bothered? Should you be bothered? The answer, if you're like, ugh. WordPress, boring, is sorry, (laughs) you're probably going to need to familiarize yourself with it. Actually, that's a lie. You don't have to familiarize yourself with WordPress so much. If you haven't got the skills nor the inclination, there are plenty of websites out there that can help you build a site in a less complicated way these days. So there is no excuse. They've made it super easy. There are a lot of reasons why having a website for your podcast is important. I'm going to take you through a bunch of them today so that you can familiarize yourself with the impact that it can have and then maybe you will change your mind about your hatred of WordPress. Believe me, I've done a lot of website building in my time um, (laughs) and it's not as horrible as it seems to be in the beginning when you're like, what is this dark art that I'm looking into? First reason you want a website for your podcast is because it helps with discoverability. If people are searching for certain keywords and you have got your show notes optimized for those keywords or even pages devoted to your podcast optimized to those keywords, people can find your show or individual episodes via search results in Google. So it's very important that you have a website that has some rich information in the show notes for each episode, because not only can it help your show be discovered currently, but if you've got a whole archive of episodes, if you've been rolling these things out for years and you've got hundreds of episodes, it's very rare that somebody's going to scroll all the way down in your podcast app. But an old episode from two years ago could easily pop up at the top of a Google search if somebody was searching for that specific keyword that that post was optimized for. So it can be a great opportunity for your show to be found not only currently, but also past episodes, which helps keep older content alive. And it's also a good reason to keep your website show notes updated if at all possible. Obviously, if it is content that exists in the moment, there's no need to update it. You don't need to do that. But if it is evergreen content that you could get some benefit out of updating, it's always a good idea to do that because Google loves a bit of an update and we do like to do what Google likes. The second reason it's a good idea to have a website is that it is a place where listeners can find out more about you. Building a relationship with your listeners when you are potentially never going to meet any of them, maybe you might do if you do live events at one point in time or if they bump you in the street, but for the most part, we're building an online relationship with our audience and And it's a really good idea for them to get a sense of the depth and breadth of what you do and who you are and what your experience has been and what other shows you do. So a website can be a great hub for that kind of thing. And it can be a way that an audience can feel like they get to know you a little bit better. So if you have other shows in your repertoire, not just the one that somebody's listened to, if they come to your website, it's a great way to showcase some of those other shows. If you have a paid offering or a course or something else that you offer that's part of your business, then it's a great opportunity to showcase that as well. And of course, an about page that gives the listener a bit more context about who you are, where you came from, what happened, how you ended up doing this show that they love so much. That can all be a great way to just make them feel like they know you a little bit better, which is really important when you are trying to turn people from just listeners into fans. And a step on from that is that a website can be a way that helps you communicate with those people. So not only is it a place for them to come and find out more about you and get a sense of who you are, but also it's a way for them to get in contact. So you can link to all of your social media profiles there. You can have a contact page so people can email you directly. If people like your show, they are going to want to email you directly. They're going to want to tell you about that. Sometimes they might not like your show and they might want to tell you about that too, but that is just part of the course. You just got to deal with the good and the bad. You can also potentially get them to join an email list and send them a newsletter, which can be a really nice way to connect with them and continue the conversation outside of just the release of your individual episodes. So communication is really important and your website can also provide a bit of a hub for that so that you can keep in contact with the people who enjoy your show. Next up, a website provides a universal link for you and your listeners to share when they're promoting your podcast. So I've got another episode of this podcast that explains about universal links and gives you a few examples of how you can create them. But essentially, 
essentially uh, Apple iTunes links do not work for Android phones. And so you want to make sure that whatever link you are using to share your podcast, it can work on every single phone. Good thing is a website works for everyone. So it could be a simple way to share your podcast without anybody missing out. So that's always a good thing, especially if when they come to the website after clicking on the universal link, they find a whole bunch of other information that they didn't know before. A website can also be a way for you to provide added value for your listeners. So of course, naturally, your podcast episodes that you dish out free are super valuable. I'm not suggesting otherwise, but it might be a great opportunity to actually provide additional content that deepens that relationship with your audience even more and makes them just love you that little bit extra because they don't just get your free podcast content, but they also get something else helpful. So maybe if you're teaching things on your podcast, that could be a little cheat sheet or something that applies to that specific episode. If you are referring to a lot of different products or tools or or websites or other podcast episodes in your actual episode content, it's often a good idea to have a bunch of those links in one place on your show notes page so that your listeners don't have to sit there madly (laughs) taking notes like it's an exam, scribbling things down with a pen and paper. So that can be a really helpful resource that doesn't take much additional work, but just can be super, super helpful for somebody who is listening to that podcast and just wants a single easy place to go to get all of the links to everything that you reference. Of course, some of those bits of added value like your cheat sheets and PDFs or any of that kind of stuff can be a way to get people onto your email list and through your funnel into your paid services if you want. And that means that your website can be a way to monetize your audience as well. It can be that way through a funnel or alternatively, you could have links to where people can donate to your show. You could sell merchandise for your show on your website, or you could also have affiliate links on your website as well. So if there are products or services that you recommend that you have an affiliate relationship with, you could earn a little commission on those as well. So it provides an opportunity to turn your podcast into a business by bringing people to your website. Now, if you are new to podcasts, there is often a bit of a discussion around podcast analytics and where the gaps are and everything is moving in a good direction, I will say. Things are getting better and we will only get better and better analytics as time goes on. But really, it's super useful for you to have as much information about the people who consume your content as possible. You can get part of that from your podcast analytics, but you can also get that from Google Analytics if you have a website. So that can provide some really helpful information about how people are finding you, what pages of your website they are looking at, how long they're sticking around for. And that can help you to make some decisions about how you can improve and optimize your content. And then you can kind of watch that over time and see how those improvements are working. And it just helps you get a more well-rounded idea of the people that are coming to you, whether it's via their ears or their eyes. And if you are trying to reach more people, it's just a great idea to be in more places. And certainly a website is one of those important places to be, especially with the power of Google and how that can open you up and get your show in front of people that might not have ever heard of you before. And then finally, the reason you would like to have a website is that it looks professional. There is an assumption when you listen to a podcast that you're going to be able to do a bit of searching around for them and find a website and find out more and get a sense of where the show came from and who presents it and what other stuff they do. And if you can't find a website for a podcast, it does feel a little bit like maybe this isn't going to be around for a while. There is a sense of professionalism to having a hub to your website uh, where you can kind of control the brand and you can communicate with your audience and it just makes it feel a bit like you've got a shop front, you know, like you've put the time and the effort into putting the bricks and mortar together, the online bricks and mortar and setting up something that says, I'm going to be here for a while. So this is a show that, you know, I'd love you to commit to because I've committed to it as well. So it just looks really professional. And I just want to wrap up with a bit of a pro tip. So a lot of people will ask me about buying a domain for their podcast. I always buy domains for my podcasts. Often when I'm thinking about names for the show, I will change my mind about the name of the show if I can't get the domain. 
And what I do is not create a new website for every single podcast that I have, but rather I take that domain and I redirect that URL so that it goes directly to the page of my personal website where all of my archives for that specific podcast are housed. So that means that I am pushing everybody to one specific website rather than having nine different websites that are just kind of getting bits and pieces of viewing here and there, but rather I consolidate everything on my own website. And that means that people come and they get what they came for. So they come for the show notes via you've got to start somewhere.com or podschoolpodcast.com. But then they realize, oh, I'm on a website right now that has a bit more information about the person that does this show. They can check out my blog post. They can see my about page. They can get details of my podcasting course, Pod School. So there's a lot more information there. It just makes it feel like a more well-rounded offering, but it also means that you can have a much easier messaging in your show. So it's much easier for me to say, if you want to check out the show notes for this episode, head to podschoolpodcast.com than it is to say, head to RachelCorbett.com, then go up to the menu, click on podcast, go down to pod school, find the pod school show notes, and then you can search within there. I mean, somebody's fallen asleep already before I've even gotten to the end of those instructions. So you just want to point somebody to a really simple place and then let the redirecting do all the work for them. I hope that's helped you get your head around podcast websites and whether you need one. Do you? Yes, you do. So let's all get comfy with WordPress together. If you need a little help with your podcast, please check out my online podcasting course. You can find that at podschool.com.au where I take you step by step through everything you need to know to go from having no idea to absolutely nailing your podcast. I'll see you in the next episode and until then, happy podcasting. That's all for today. 